Hi guys, welcome back and this time for you I have got the QKZ XHBB Khan. This is uh, the latest collaboration between QKZ and uh, uh, reviewer, fellow reviewer uh, HBB. Uh, and uh, this time uh, it's a dual dynamic driver. Uh, it sports a 10mm and a 7.8mm driver. And I'm just uh, showing you the box. This is the graph that uh, um, apparently the Khan is able to produce. And uh, when I get into the graph section, you'll, you'll see it. And it actually is very, very much what it is here. Uh, anyway, collaboration between the two of them. Once again, the first one was the collaboration which uh, was based on the Zeus, uh, the QKZ Zeus. And that was actually quite a, quite a nice uh, IEM. Uh, it did well. What uh, it did, it did, it did justice to the uh, HBB signature, and this one also, to a certain extent, uh, does justice to to that signature. Although there is a, a lot of um, similarities to a, another IEM of the same type. But anyway, I'll get to that. I'll get to that in a second. This is the box. IEMs came over there. Underneath here, well, it's got this coin. Uh, thing, whatever you want to call it, nice little souvenir, I guess. And underneath that, you have the case, which, uh, in all honesty, I'll I'll be frank, I, I would have preferred there to be a a soft case, you know, something because this is this really looks very uh, unbecoming. Let's put it that way, because the IEM itself is so nice that this is very, uh, you know. And the cable, which is also again a very simple cable, I guess. Uh, enough miracles were done if you take in consideration. It's it's a, it's a nice shell, which I'll show to you now in a second. Nice shell, two drivers, well tuned. Uh, you know, if you take all of those factors into consideration, you you know, you, and and the price of thirty five dollars, um, it, it's 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 hard to do. Uh, honestly, it's hard to do better than that. Anyway, that's the package. Nice box, decent enough, shows off the IM nicely. As for the IM itself, uh, nice, uh, nice enough shell. Um, it's made of what seems to be kind of a three D printed resin. Okay, uh, I'm not using the stock cable, but it is a QKZ cable, uh, the modular one, and uh, I'll actually uh, take this opportunity to say. These cables are surprisingly good, not only in terms of the overall quality, but I've actually done some measurements of this cable, and you would be surprised at how well these cables actually measure. So um, I think we have an example here that uh, something cheap can sometimes be, uh, well, something cheap, now let me rephrase that, something affordable can sometimes be of, 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 of pretty decent quality. And that's the case. The plugs themselves are modular. It comes. It's it's a, it's a nice. It's a generally nice cable. This thing goes for like uh, fifteen dollars on AliExpress. And uh, well, I guess it would have been nice if it came together with the can. Uh, although then I guess the price would not have been thirty five dollars. Would have been fifty dollars, which I still think would have been more than acceptable and more than fair. And and people would still have paid that money. Anyway, back onto the IM. Uh, I'm using a. a one of the one of the pairs of tips that it brings this kind of like white. Uh, um, anyway, I'm using the, the stock tips that comes with the can. They f work perfectly. I tried the my trusted uh, KB Euro sevens and and uh, some also um, KB Euro eights and uh, and a few uh, foams. But they actually very funny enough. This tip is the one that that worked just the best. It just married the best with I am. Um, the shell, when you look at the shell, uh, it, and I could be some, saying something wrong here, but I don't, I don't honestly think I am. The shell reminds me a lot of the shell of the True 3 Years Hexa in terms of its, of its quality. I'm trying to just, the quality, this kind of semi-transparent, uh, you know, printed, it, it reminds me very much of that same quality um, which you know could beg the question is this uh, perhaps being manufactured by the same people that manufacture the truth here stuff uh, well I don't know uh, you know it's QKZ but the, the reality is there's a lot of um, 
joint ventures uh, behind the scenes and you never know if this is actually being print you know being built by by that same company because i know that company builds iems for many many uh, many other brands so it, it could be anyway that's that's irrelevant there honestly i was it was just a little observation the the fit is is fine it fits beautifully there's really no complaints there um isolates really nicely the the the, the nozzle length is perfect and with these the medium sized tips it really i am really able to deep fit the the can into my ear and that's the way i like you know as as whenever it's possible i really like my aims to be as deep as possible it just they, they you know it does away with all sorts of resonances and stuff and it just marries with my ears perfectly and and i really am able to 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 get or to extract the most in terms of performance um on to what we want to know which is the sound and what does it sound like and what is it like anyway um I've got here uh, the truth here is zero. I've got two sets of three. Um, I never did a review for this IEM because unfortunately the first two sets that I got, they had terrible channel, in, channel imbalances. I'm talking about a difference of about eight dBs on the base. And uh, unfortunately my attempts to get a set sent to me as a replacement were not successful. So I ended up buying a third one, which is this one here. This one is fine, and this out of the other two sets is what I was able to salvage. I was able to kind of fix it somewhat, and this this set here is the two best sides of the, the other first two sets, and this is the third set that I bought. Uh, be it in this one, which was fine and, and I had no issues, or be it this one, which has been fixed by me, the the channel balance and i think maybe i'm not saying something which is completely wrong and i'm sure other people experience this the channel balance in this particular i am i don't think it's 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 it's, it's forte there's always uh, there's always differences although having said that i was able to keep the channel differences in this in these two well in this one within about two db is not even that less and this one actually wasn't too bad it was about within a db a db and a half as well um, and it's 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 minor, uh, or, you know, to for it to be actually noticeable. But it, it's just a question of being nice. You want to look at the graph, and you want to see that your left and right side are almost identical. But anyway, um, that uh, issue with the, the the inability to solve this problem led me to never make a review. Although obviously, once once I got this pro, this this one, and I had these this this one fixed, I was able to understand and listen to it the, to the zero nicely and, and have my own and form my own idea about it this is roughly fifty dollars as we know the next two iams that i have here are two iams which um have 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 established themselves nicely in the price that they have the first is a tin hi-fi c2 and the other one is the qes cadenza this goes for about thirty dollars. That goes for about uh, thirty-five dollars, which is curiously enough the same price as the can. Um, so, in terms of value for money, uh, you know, if you look at uh, the, the the construction side of things, uh, the number of drivers, how everything is just you know nicely put together, um, the can uh, would uh, seem to be the one that takes uh, the, the 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 you know the. The price, but I'm actually going to give the price to the, the 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 C2 simply because it's got a really really nice metal shell. Nothing nothing which is absolutely novel. We I mean we've seen this shell in or similar shell to, to this IEM in other IEMs before, but the fact that they were able to actually they were actually able to offer a metal shell with this quality or this level of quality in terms of the machining work and everything, uh, and also it's 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 sporting a a decent enough LCP driver, I guess, deserves it to to you know to to be um, to be the one that is actually the better built out of all of these. Uh, also, in terms of the channel balancing, uh, be it on the tin hi-fi or be it on the cadenza, it is spot on. And when I mean spot on, they are perfect. So kudos to them. As for that aspect, same aspect in terms of channel balance with regards to the can, perfect again. So. I'm assuming that 
uh, quality control has been uh, or is being performed within a reasonable a reasonable level or an acceptable level and therefore uh, no issues here uh, at least well when I compare this with the quality control of the zero uh, it, it just uh, supplants the zero uh, completely um, on to the sound well the sound of, of the can is as I mentioned uh, very similar to the sound of the, the true tears zero in that it has um, one of the drivers, the 10mm drivers, driver, sorry, uh, tuned in a, in a way that it uh, ded dedicates it to, to basically a subwoofer. So by 200 hertz, it's flat. And then the smaller driver, uh, the 7.8mm, picks up on that and then uh, does the rest of the frequency spectrum. Apologies for my phone here, yeah, notifications. Um, so, yeah, that, that's, that's what we have. 10 millimeter working as a dedicated subwoofer up to, up to 200 hertz and then it gets cut off or cut out or sub, you know its output gets subdued and then the 7.8 is the one that takes care of the, the rest of the frequencies the difference graphically at least and I've seen some graphs of the two of these two IEMs where there's a, a big difference between them in my particular case no there isn't a really a big difference the difference that does exist between the can and the zeros is the base is basically the same, the way that it then travels through the lower mids and the majority of the mids before the pin again starts is also very similar. Where then we have a difference is while the can takes a, a, a slower ascend into the pin again, peaking it over 3k, uh, this has a more uh, abrupt by comparison a rise and peaks at about 3k. So this peaks at about 3, this peaks past 3k. Um, and that's, in a nutshell, that's the basic difference that you see when you're looking at the graph. In terms of, of uh, sound, um, and, you know, uh, let's assume the comparison, or let's assume, no, let's take into cost, let's take the fact that I did the, the biggest part of the comparison of the can, I did it with the one that I bought that uh, is this one yeah, that was fine from factory. I didn't do it so much with the one that I ended up fixing. Although, although having said that, they sound and they graphed almost identical. So the, the, the issue that was present in this set, I was able to resolve it. Which was basically to do with a nozzle and the situation in the nozzle. But anyway, that's, that's not important now. Um, the difference that you notice between one and the other is very minimal. L let me let me be frank about it. It's very minimal. Um, ultimately, it has to do with what is your preference. Do you prefer a more abrupt pin again with the accompanying uh, aspects that come with that, or more mellow, mellow, more chilled out? Um, if it's a little bit more abrupt, or let's say it normal, it will when you compare the one and the other, it will give you the, the feeling or the perception that this perhaps is a little bit too forward uh, and, you know, uh, a little bit too much. This one on the other end, having a more subdued pin again, um, does lay back, the, does, does put into a second, into a second plane the, the, the mids and especially female vocals on here are a little bit laid back by comparison to the zero. Um, and can to some people perhaps sound a little bit dark. Personally, I didn't find that to be the situation, and I actually thought that the um, the um, can uh, had a, a great part of its strength in terms of its sound reproduction, down to the way certain instruments are very nice, like the Spanish Spanish guitar. You hear it on here, and. If on the one hand you would like just a little bit more of that twang of the chords being pulled, you know, at the same time the way that it's executed there is very nice. It's 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 got this nice tonality to it. Um, is it radically different to the zero? No, it's not. On the zero, you do get a little bit more of that twang, but for some reason, it just it doesn't seem as as smooth. It doesn't seem that as um, things just seem a little bit more edgy uh, on here as opposed to here uh, and 
you know, it's it's very much a song dependent thing. There were certain songs that I preferred the the can. There were other songs that I preferred the zero. But overall, overall, the differences between these two is very minimal. And I personally, I personally preferred the can. Uh, I'm saying this, and I'm trying to not use any bias towards the fact that I was unlucky with these sets. No, it was basically three sets that I ended up buying. Um, I'm saying this because I personally like um, a, a, a nice gradual pin again. Uh, so this fits my 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 preferred criteria perfectly. Although, as I, I say and repeat once again. The differences are very minor, and and the truth is, you know, the the the, the can does things very nicely. In terms of um, um, its its uh, let's say technical abilities, its its you know timbre, tonality, imaging, soundstage, resolution, detail retrieval. As I mentioned, timbre and tonality, I think it's it's pretty good. It's nicely done. But then again, that wasn't an issue there as well. It was reasonably, you know, it was also very good there. So they were, they were very equal in that aspect. In terms of soundstage, I did find the can to be um, not as wide, a little bit more closed in, but it, um, it, it engages you more somehow. I, I, I can't really, um, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult um, thing to explain because... Uh, you know, when it comes, when we're talking about technicalities, it's always uh, an area which is very subjective and dependent on an individual. But for example, if I take a song like Riviera, uh, like Riviera from Bob Zap, uh, Bob Zop, sorry, uh, and, and Billy Esteban from uh, Café de Anatolia, be it the zero or be it the can, it they have enough weight in the in the bass department to convey the fullness that this song has, definitely. But somehow, somehow, I just preferred the overall balance of things on here um, having said that a song like for example Willow uh, Weep For Me um, by um, uh, sorry Willow Weep For Me by Jacinta I actually prefer that song with uh, the zero because the voice just it just comes out a little bit extra more detailed more, more crisp uh, and especially the sex on this particular song, uh, the the f the fact that this has got that little extra energy there, you know, at at one point five to three k as compared to this, it just fills out the the song better. It's at, but you know, keep in mind. I mean, I'm not talking huge differences here. Uh, so uh, soundstage, uh, you know, it, as I mentioned, it, it, you know, I would end up giving the sound stage to both of them. Uh, timbre and tonality, I'll give it to this. Uh, imaging, um, again, very, very equal. Uh, resolution and detailed retrieval. Uh, again, it, they trade blows. Um, ultimately, there's more here, ultimately. Um, and yeah, I guess that basically covers that aspect. In terms of the, of the actual frequency response, the bass is the same thing. Uh, mids or uh, as I mentioned before a little bit scooped you know uh, by nature of the way that this is being tuned uh, you lose a little bit of that let's say bleed into the mids which many times happens helps in you know with its uh, harmonics helps to complement things and just give it that little extra lushness sometimes we have this 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 tendency of wanting to oh no it's got to be absolutely flat before it reaches the mid so by 200 250 hertz it's got to be flat okay fine that is true but at the same time sometimes not being totally flat and and allowing it to bleed slightly does help and in this case these two uh, have that problem uh, the, the the fact that they are being very much cut off at 200 hertz it makes them lose a little bit of that mid bass liveliness and mid bass impact that we would like um and that's it in the mids overall uh, you know, past then the, the, that that pin again peak in, on both of them are oh, very similar, uh, and the, the highs as well very similar. Um, be it the zero or be it the can, they very much are dependent on the tips. Very much the tip is 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 very very most it's it's most likely the the, the one of the make it or break it of this IEM. Okay, so I guess in that aspect I've covered the two closest ones here. 
Then I have, as I mentioned, the, the C2 and the, the QE ear scale. So why do I have these two here? Because they two represent two very well IMs, very well tuned IMs, priced in this 28 to 35 dollar bracket. Uh, by comparison, the the C2 is a little bit leaner to the to the um, to the can. It's a little bit more leaner. Doesn't have the, that same sub bass rumble. But but on the other hand, it is more detailed. It's more open. The sound. It's got more detail, better detail, retrieval, better imaging, better sound stage. So it's you know you give and take. It's 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 the way it is. The cadenza, uh, thirty five dollars, and again. Uh, what you do notice straight away when you hear it is that this does have that missing mid bass that you don't have here and there. It does have it, um, and it's got an even fuller bass, so there's even more extension in in the rumble area. Um, whether that makes sense or not, I think I'm going to leave that to the criteria of each one. Um, you know, following on a on a thought of a of, of a fellow reviewer, and in this case, actually HBB, he was the one talking about it. You know, in car audio. We usually use uh, what is known as um, subsonic filtering to do away with most of the information below 20 hertz because that information is more uh, ends up being more mechanical than necessarily audible energy, and uh, it it will make the, the subwoofers uh, work over time unnecessarily so. Uh, you know the, the the musical content that low is not that much. I remember myself particularly when I was involved in car audio. I had a system comprising of four 15-inch subwoofers in my car at the time. Uh, it was four 15-inch JL Audio subwoofers. And these great big uh, custom-made boxes by myself, which were kind of a mix of um, of a horn loading bass reflex ported boxes, and they were tuned to. Uh, 22 hertz and then um, with a, a 36 dB per octave subsonic filter uh, centered at 20 hertz and let me tell you when when I when I say uh, that I was able to really really rumble and feel that really deep guttural sub bass like scary kind of uh, it, it, it was so I know what that's about and uh, you know it, both in the the Khan and in the, the zero when you actually look at the graph and you see it rolling off like it does at, at a point there uh, You know some might think ah, oh, but you're losing a, a bit of ultimate information down low and no you don't trust me You don't it's actually not a bad thing that that is done that way It actually protects the driver from over excursion and allows it to be cleaner and distort less because ultimately let's be let's be realistic for this to have the price that it has, it's, it cannot have a driver here which is the, the best of the best. No, it's a, it's, a, it's a budget driver, be it this case, be it that case. These are all relatively budget drivers of acceptable quality. And, you know, if, if you can have them working in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a range of frequencies which is going to optimize their function, then let's do it. Let's not uh, let them get into difficulties unnecessarily. So, um, going back to what I was saying, so... You do notice that the, the tin uh, doesn't have the ultimate rumble here that that uh, the the can has, but it does have a more impactful a more impactful mid bass. Obviously, it, it's it's been tuned that way, and it's cleaner as well in the mids. So it's not so much that this is better than that or that is better than this, but there are different flavors. It's what you would prefer. The reason why it's here is because it's a, a very good IEM that is you know gone a little bit under the radar all the attention is being focused more on for example the tanks of one year and the tanks of one year however good it is and it is a good IEM you know if I have to look at it purely as IEM quality sound the tin to the you know the, the C3 the tin i5 C, C2 sorry not C3 the tin i5 C2 is a superior IEM it is and the QE years cadenza um is a warmer version of this. The QES Cadenza uh, is able to rumble. It's able to have that nice, full, lush bass with, again, a decent amount of mid bass, uh, which, you know, again, it's not a question it's better or worse. It's a very nicely done Harman signature, in my opinion. Very, very capable of 
trading blows with way more expensive IEMs, very capable. And uh, an IEM, which uh, again, because of its price, I thought it just makes sense to have it here. Um, it's got supposedly uh, a brilliant coated driver. And uh, although it's got the price and although we already know the driver is not gonna be anything you know, fantastic or special or anything of the sort, the, the reality is you do notice there's a certain quality to the to the way that it plays back music and and it does things you know in a very nice uh, manner um with all this what more can i say about the the khan the khan is an iem that um oh actually i forgot to mention one thing the one of the iems that uh, obviously when seeing the graph uh, you know, you, you, you will automatically kind of think, oh, this, this has got a graph very similar to Moondrop Variations. And I actually obviously took out the variations and had a quick listen. And yes, although graphically there are similarities uh, and, and there are times where you actually, you know, can almost say, wow, this thing actually doesn't, uh, doesn't uh, it, it, it's capable of trading blows with the variations. Obviously, when you really start pushing things and, you know, you do notice that the variations is uh, on a different uh, on a different stepping stone and and, and and it is a very very good IEM but overall you get on the variations I got very much the the vibe that I get on the variations which is this very nice dumb you know rumbly feeling a little bit lack of mid bass impact that sometimes is welcomed and then you know pretty decent uh, um, mid range presentation so uh, of course the, the variations then has got a much more lush clean detailed uh, you know uh, mature way of, of doing everything so that that out of the way what is my conclusion with regards to the can the can is definitely um, an IEM that I think is worth considering uh, if you want uh, or if you're looking for a dual DD uh, IEM um, if you factor in that it's cheaper than the um, than the truth year zero and that it seems to have so far i haven't heard anybody really complain about its quality control issues so if if in fact its quality control issues are of a superior um uh, you know nature as compared to the to the to the zero then definitely yes if i was to choose between the two definitely the the can is an option. As as for the you know the C two or, or the cadenza compared to the can, uh, well, probably the one that ultimately will maybe draw in more people. I think will probably be the QES cadenza. That's my personal opinion. But the reality is that any one of these three IMs, I mean, you can't go wrong. Honestly, you can't. Uh, if you want ultimate, you know, ultimate base and extension in that lower department, and then yes, fair enough, the the, the can is the best. If you want the best overall uh, tonality and engagement without, you know, throughout the whole frequency range, I would probably say that the the, the cadenza is the one that would take that, um, and the one that is out of the three the more detailed, and I guess that that, that also happens. Uh, because of the way that the, the tuning has been done, uh, not not emphasizing so much the bass frequencies, that that uh, price will probably go to the C two. But any one of the three is a good IEM, and uh, you know an IEM, IEMs which are worth considering. So if you do have the opportunity to listen to them, do do listen and, and then take your decision from there. Anyway, guys, that's that's my that's my take on on the on the QKZ Khan. Um, I'll show you the graphs now next, and uh, yeah. Any, any more questions, please feel free to ask. Uh, as always, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Hi, guys, and uh, welcome to the graph section for my review of the QKZ uh, HBB CAN. Uh, this is the graph of the CAN, as you can see. Uh, very much the same kind of signature that you uh, find in the um, Truth Years Zero and in the, uh, kind of the variations as well. And talking about the variations, let me <clears throat> excuse me straight away show you the graph of the variations so and, and the reason being I, I, as I mentioned in the review I kind of got a certain vibe of the variations at, 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 uh, at certain points of of the listening and I'll explain now in a little bit more detail let me just align this slightly better uh, 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 okay there we go that's it and now change the color there we go. Okay. So as you can see, both of them have got this 
tuning of the of the DD, which um, focuses on, on the sub bass, and, and by 200 hertz, it's basically flat. Either one of them. Um, actually, let me just do something here. I'm actually going to center this at 500 hertz. There, better. This is better. This will better explain what I want to 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 say. What to what you actually hear. So they both have the kind of same bass way of doing things. Obviously, the bass of the variation is is more polished, is more quality. You can feel that the driver obviously is a better quality driver, so everything just comes across with a little bit extra texture. Now, where the difference obviously is is the mids of the of the of the variations are very good, uh, although. Uh, you know there is a little bit of lack in terms of mid bass which could help out a little bit um, but that also happens in the kind of, the variations has this, this has these incredible mids and and you know the way they've been done and tuned it's it's it's, it's perfect and, and that's where you really see the the, the, the variations uh, in my opinion shining but anyway the variations wasn't the comparison the comparison was with um, the truth years zero and the truth is zero, as I mentioned, there were, well, I had one mm, final third uh, one that came in that was in, in good condition, which is the graph that I just put up. And as you can see, and I've seen some graphs of the kind showing significantly more, more, more base. And in this case, no, if I have it, uh, if I have them uh, aligned at one kilohertz, you can see that they both have the same kind of base. And if I actually align it at 500 hertz, you will see even that the uh, zero has more base, slightly more base than the uh, than the can. But uh, look, it doesn't really matter. What is what is the differentiating factor between the two of them is the way that the mids are done. And in that aspect, the mids of the of the of the zero uh, are kind of a little bit more reminiscent of the mids of the. Uh, Variations, as you can see, there's a an earlier pin again, uh, and, and 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 maintaining that energy at a, at a higher level across. But that earlier pin again just you know opens up the, the vocals a little bit more. Although when you actually hear it, <clears throat> it wasn't as pronounced as I uh, actually would think that it would be. There were occasions that yes, I would uh, say that I preferred the, the zero, uh, and there were occasions where uh, I preferred the can. So it's it's uh, I'm I'm actually gonna end up having to say that I trade blows with regards to how the way they they've done this area one and the other, as opposed to giving it an outright win to the one or the outright loss to the other. Uh, the extension. Past 10k is basically the same. You don't really see this, this difference as you see in the graph, and the base as well again is is basically the same. So all in all, I mean, uh, maybe it's my particular unit that I have. Um, I can't really say. The one of the other two sets of um, uh, of uh, zeros that I got that I was able to fix up, okay, is the one that I've just laid on now, and I'm actually going to still going to just align it at 500 hertz, and as you can see. I actually did a pretty good job of fixing it. Uh, actually, did a pretty good job of fixing it. it. Almost came out identical. Look, if I'm just taking away the can, you can see they almost came out identical. The difference is more over here in this area. And um, the problem that I was having was uh, basically uh, a little bit of glue that was uh, on the back of the damper of of the of those sets. And that glue was uh, uh, basically blocking the sound, and, and and thus conferred this crazy amount of uh, of bass on one side as opposed to the other. Um, and I was able out of the four to kind of uh, come up with with two that were more more better matched. Let's put it that way. There were some differences as well uh, in the in the in the higher frequency, let's say, reduction of of two of them. They were a little bit more jagged, more raggedy. But of the four, two were, I was lucky to have a left and a right hand side that actually worked out half decent and, and that's what I was able to obtain. And as you can see, you know, comparing the two, it's, it's, it's more than acceptable. Um, comparing it to the current, once again, uh, the same situation. Um, 
the earlier rise of the pin again does confer some uh, more energy in terms of the female vocals just sounding a little bit more uh, a little bit more full um, and the male vocals and the can maybe occasionally sounding a little bit too laid back but uh, it, it although it's it's fine the other IEM that I actually compared the can to uh, was the uh, cadenza um, over here there we go and um, in the cadenza, uh, although you know graphically you don't see such a difference here as you would perceive, you know, the the reality is, uh, and I guess it's the, the the balancing of how the bass has been done and the way that it just you know continues without that, that have without losing that much energy in this uh, let's say hundred to to three hundred hertz area. The way that this is being done here affects the way that this then sounds. And the cadenza, when you listen to the cadenza compared, you know, to the can, you do notice more difference in terms of of the male and female vocals as compared to the zero from uh, Truth Years. So, if I have to compare the can, sorry, the, the the cadenza to the Truth Years zero, let me put this one on there. Yeah, those are the graphs of the two of them. Um, I do notice, and let me just align them so that it, everything is really perfect. I do notice the mids, uh, the, the, the mids and upper mids on the cadenza to be more um, more detailed, more more alive uh, in the cadenza than they are in the in the zero. It's not a huge day and night difference. I mean, if by looking at the graph would be an indicator, you would say there was no difference. But hearing it, you do notice, and, and it's a, a quite easy to to uh, identify one and the other. And all of this, honestly, the way that the mids are done here, I think, and that ease of identifying one over the other, I think, is down to just the way that this area here is done. So this. Okay, and contrary to what people say, the way, or what some people might say, the way the bass is done, this will definitely uh, interfere on the way that the mids, upper mids, uh, are then uh, coming through, okay? Uh, and, and, and it's very noticeable. You notice it very well, both in the, in the Truth Year Zero and in the, the, the Can, the HVB, you, you notice that the mids on the cadenza are, are more or more open, more more alive, more more there. That's it. Anyway, guys, as always, like and subscribe. Any questions that you might have, please feel free to ask. And uh, yeah, see you in the next one. Take care.